Okay, today we are making gumbo. And right now I have my ceramic Dutch oven getting it heated up so I can put the oil and the flour in it. In this back pan, I already have chicken thighs um, and the broth. And I put actually onions, celery, and bay leaf inside of this. So this is my chicken thighs. And then in this other cast iron, I have my sausage. And what I did was cut them up, slice them in half, and I browned them. And I have all of this ready, so once my rear is done, I could go ahead and start dumping in my vegetables. So, I'm going to use a cup of oil. This is um, extra virgin olive oil. Put that in there. And if you use a ceramic um, Dutch oven or any type of cast iron pan, you need to be cautious because it does um, brown your roux very fast. A cup of flour, put that in there. And you're just going to mix it until it combines. My fire is on about a medium heat. And you see how it's already sizzling? Cast iron pans get hot very quickly. So you want this to get a nice brown chocolate color. And you also want to make sure that you do not have clumps of flour in your room. You want it to be smooth. Okay. Okay, so you see it is foaming up. Once it gets past this process, it's gonna stop, but you want it to, like I said, get to a nice chocolate color. And it would take mm, maybe about 20, 25 minutes for you to get to that point. And then you just wanna make sure that, um, oh, just a side note, FYI. It may smell like your roux is burning, but it's not. As long as you're constantly stirring it and mixing it up and moving it around, it's not going to burn. Now, if you are to were to leave it, it may it's a, a very big chance that it may burn. Okay, so right now it's maybe about like a caramel color, and it's starting to try to break apart, meaning that the flour from the oil, but it's okay because. Once it gets darker, it's going to get a lot smoother. So right now, it's only been about 10 minutes. But again, this is a, a, a heavy Dutch oven, ceramic one. So it's going to be, um, it's not going to take as long as it would if you use a different type of pan. Okay, so you see the color of the room. It is like a dark, not like a dark chocolate, but maybe milk, a little bit darker than milk chocolate. This is the color how you want it to be. At least that's the color I like. Um, you may want it a little bit darker or a little lighter. All you need to do is just keep picking it to the color that you would like. And um, make sure you just mix it up really well. So now I'm going to add in my vegetables, what they call the Holy Trinity, which is celery, bell pepper, and onions. I already have that cut up to the, in, to the side in a bowl. So I'm going to go ahead and add that in right now. Here it is right here. And I also put some other sweet peppers in there um, that I had in a refrigerator that was about to go off. So I just went ahead and added those in there. Can you see how dark that is? Let's see that. So now my pot is on low. 
while I'm cooking this. Let me just kind of this all together. So with the onions I use, um, for the, I'm sorry, the vegetables, I use one onion, one bell pepper, four stalks of celery, and then I use about five of the smaller peppers, red, yellow, and green. And I'll put it in here. So now what I'm going to do is, while this, I'm going to leave this for a little bit and put my chicken in a bowl so I can put my, my broth in here. Okay. So again, I'm going to show you the color it is. Look how dark it is. Look at that. See how pretty that is? A dark chocolate. So now, since it has been cooking, I say I left it for about five or six minutes. I'm going to go ahead and pour in my chicken broth. Look how pretty that is. With the celery and the onions. I'm going to pour that in there. I'm going to pour a little bit in there and stir it up. And I'm going to pour the rest in there. Can you see how it's thickening it up? I'm going to pour a little bit more in there in here. And that was four cups of the homemade chicken broth that I had when I picked up the six thighs. Let me put the rest in there. See, it's getting a little thick, so I may just put another two cups in here, or a little bit more. Oh, uh, not two cups. And one more, I'm say three layers. Grab them down the sides in here. Okay, so now it seems a little thick, so I'm gonna put in another two and a half cups of my chicken broth in there in here. And then also, I'm going to add my sausage. And the sausage that I'm using, using is in Zuli sausage. Um, the brand is, I think it's um, Manda, M-A-N-D-A. That's the only sausage that I use when I make my gumbo. So we have all the vegetables in, we have the sausage in, and now all I have to do is take the meat off the bones of my chicken, and then I will add it in. Okay, so I got the chicken off, my, off the bones. Here it is right here, and these are chicken thighs. I'm just going to put this in here. And give it a stir. And then over in this pan, I have a cup and a half of rice, just two cups of water, and put a little bit of salt in here. Okay. 
right? So since I use my chicken broth, it should not need any seasoning. I'm gonna try and see. That's good. That is really good. I'm gonna put a little bit of honey saturates in it to create a seasoning. I'm rubbing it out in there. And then um I really I don't do measurements. So you put it to your taste, however you, you would like to do it. And what your taste is, if you like a lot of salt, if you don't like a lot, it's to your taste. And then I'm going to add in three bay leaves. One, two, three. Three bay leaves. Three bay leaves. Okay, and some garlic. and pepper and i'm sorry if you hear my dog in the background but there is some coyotes around so he barks to let them know he's here okay so with gumbo you want to let it simmer for about an hour and a half to two hours and the way it is right now with the liquid, you want to be able to tell the difference between gumbo and stew. So you don't want the want the liquid or your roux to be too thick. And I'm just going to go over the ingredients I use. So I boiled six chicken thighs with onions and celery and bay leaf and some water. I added some chicken bouillon. The nor one. I added two tablespoons of that and then I added some Tony Saturates to it and I let it cook for about 35 to 40 minutes. And then with your roux, you do one cup of oil and one cup of flour and you mix that all together until you get it to the color that you will like. Some like it to be a caramel color, some like it to be a darker chocolate. I'm somewhere in, in between of that. Um, so once you get that done, you have four, four stalks of celery, one onion, and one bell pepper. Top that up, and you add it to your roux once you get it to the color that you want it to be, and you stir that up. Now with your sausage. Um, I always cook my sausage separately. You can do that, or you can just chop up your sausage and then add it to the roux with the vegetables in it. Once you do that, you add, let it cook for a few minutes. I'm going to say let it cook for about 10 minutes. And then you can start adding your chicken broth. Some add chicken broth, some is store-bought, some is homemade. Um, it's whatever you would like to do. I always do mine homemade. I think it tastes better. It gives us a, a more of a... a um, it's more flavorful to me when it's homemade. You add about four cups starting off. So add four cups of your chicken broth or four cups of water. And then you want to keep adding, adding liquid to it until you get it to where you would like it to be. Like this soupy right here, this is the way I like it. And once you do that, you add the chicken in. You start adding your seasonings, your garlic powder, your black pepper, bay leaf, salt, and your... Um, Creole seasoning and then you're going to let it simmer. You're going to stir it all together and let it simmer for about an hour and a half to two hours. And while you're letting it simmer, you can go ahead and get your rice together or do whatever else you need to do. Okay, so my gumbo has been simmering and it's looking really nice. It's still very, the broth is still thin, which is good. And what I'm going to do is add just a half a bag of okra. You can add that. You don't necessarily have to add it. I add it to mine. Um, but like I said, it's to your taste. So if you do not like okra, then you do not have to put any in your gumbo. Let's see a bit. It's kind of frozen. Let's see. 
that. And see, and that's just half a bag that I put in there. Okay, so we're going to let that cook a little bit more. And so once this cooks and it thickens up just a little bit, and it will thicken up because of the okra, I am going to add in some wild-caught shrimp. Okay, so the gumbo has been simmering and the okra has is cooked. So I'm going to go ahead and add in the shrimp. And remember, it doesn't take long for the shrimp to cook. No, like I said, you do not have to add the shrimp to it. I just like shrimp in mine. You do not have to add okra in yours as well. Um, this is the way that I like it. And so I have the shrimp in there. I'm going to kind of push it down so it could cook. And I'm going to cover the pot and let it cook for about 10 to 15 minutes. So this is the gumbo. And let me just say, um, when you do add your shrimp to your gumbo, add it to the gumbo at the end about 5 to 10 minutes after you have done everything else. You don't want to overcook your shrimp. You don't want it to be tough. And you see how that looks? That's how it's supposed to look. So this is done. I'm just going to remove the bay leaf. What the heck? I put three in here, but it made me down at the bottom. So I'm going to turn it off, and I'm going to plate it. So we have our rice, which is done, and I already flushed the rice. So put the rice in. I think, I don't know why I'm using this. Okay, and then let me take this off out of here. And then we're gonna use the ladle. And then put the gumbo. Look how good that is. With the shrimp, the sausage, the chicken, the okra. And add some of that broth in there. Look at that. And that's how you make gumbo. Um, the ingredients in the step-by-step -step instructions will be in the description tab or in the comment tab. Enjoy!